товарищ Волков, товарищ Волков открывает, окно. открывает окно. После дождя, После дождя. На, дворе хорошо. на дворе хорошо. Воздух свежий. Воздух свежий. Ночи жизнь. The beginning student of Russian must first learn how to form new sounds. Dr. Pierre Ustinov, professor of modern languages at the College of William and Mary, uses both audio and visual devices to help the student form new speech habits. These students have learned the correct pronunciation of Russian sounds by having first learned the correct position of the speech organs which form the sounds. Большое, большое, новое, новое, здание, здание. From the first day of class, a model is used to illustrate the position of the speech organs when pronouncing both English and Russian sounds. Consonants are illustrated first, then vowels. Later follow monosyllables, syllabic division, and short sentences. Dr. Ustinov begins with an explanation of this method. Now, if you wish to acquire correct pronunciation in another language, such as Russian, you must avoid forming wrong speech habits. And wrong speech habits can be avoided by learning from the very beginning the fundamental peculiarities in the enunciation of sounds which the system of that language requires. Uh, using this model, I would like to demonstrate to you the differences in articulation between certain English and Russian sounds and to describe Russian sounds which have no equivalent in English. Now, a word or two first about the model. It represents the cross-section of the head showing the articulators. The voice box, however, or the vocal cords are below this area. This represents the soft palate it can move back and forth, allowing the air to go to the nasal cavity. This is the heart palate. This is the alveolar ridge, also called the gum ridge. The white paint here represents the upper and lower incisors, front teeth. The lips here can move back and forth, depending on the position of the consonant of the vowel. And this represents a position for a tongue. The jaw also can go up and down, but it's set here for the E or U position. We shall begin with the consonants, because their articulation often determines the sound of the vowels. Uh, Mr. Zebin will help me in placing the proper uh, outlines of the tongue. The comparison between the English and the Russian sounds will be simplified by the fact that in each of the languages, a single position of the tongue will suffice to illustrate several sounds. Let's take, for instance, the English sound t. It is articulated here against the gum ridge. If the vocal cords are vibrated at the same time as t is being enunciated, you will hear the sound d. If at the same time as the d is being pronounced, the air is allowed to go through the nasal cavity, you will hear the sound n. If the articulators are in the same position for n, but the air is allowed to go through both sides of the tongue, you will hear the sound l. If again in the position for t, the tip of the tongue is slightly lowered so as to allow the air to pass between the tip and the palate, you will hear the sound s. If you voice that sound, you will hear z. So that six different consonants can be illustrated with approximately the same position of the tongue. Now let's see the position of the tongue for the Russian equivalents. Instead of being articulated against the gum ridge, the tip of the tongue will be braced against the upper incisors. Now with your tongue in that position, please repeat after me. D. D. Mm. Mm. next consonant will be an affricate. You shouldn't have any trouble with it because it's made of the two sounds t and s. And the English t and s are articulated in this 
region. So try it. And again. All right, our next sound will also be another Russian African. Basically, it's pretty close to the English CH sound, but the contact between the tongue and the palate will be larger, and the pressure against the palate will be greater. Try it. Another sound is going to be another Russian African. It shouldn't give you much difficulty either, because if you try to pronounce it in two syllables, on the first syllable, try to pronounce the soft English sound, and the second syllable, try to pronounce the sound which you've just learned before. All right. This sound <laughs> will be more Russian in nature. However, try to feel the palate with your tongue when you're saying English. The point of articulation will be about the same, but the shape of the tongue will be different. In Russian, the edges will be raised all the way around, and this part of the tongue somewhat lowered, uh, forming a spoon-like shape. And the pressure against the palate will be greater. Try it. And again. Now, if you voice this sound, you will hear the Russian <laughs> and again. <laughs> <laughs> now, the next consonant will be a Russian R. Uh, the blade of the tongue will be somewhat loose. It's still cut, but narrow. Not as uh, the area of articulation will be not nearly as wide as for sh. And the point of articulation will be more advanced. What happens here? is that the air coming through here under pressure flips this uh, blade out of the way. And as the pressure subsides, the blade comes back to the gum ridge and this motion of up and down constitutes this characteristic flutter which unvoiced will sound like <laughs> And if you voice it, it should sound like <laughs> Now try it. <laughs> All right, some of you have. Uh, another sound which doesn't have any equivalent in English is the Russian The point of articulation is against the soft palate. What happens here is that the tongue is raised, it's braced above the molars, and it's pressing against the soft palate, leaving only a small channel for the air to force its way through. And as the air forces its way through, it creates a uh, motion of noise of friction. This friction constitutes the sound of <laughs> try. <laughs> All right. Well, this finishes our description of the Russian hard consonants. The rest of the Russian hard consonants, the gutturals, the bilabials, and the labiodentals, will be pronounced in about the same way as they are in English, but without excessive aspiration. In addition, we have included in our description two essentially palatalized or soft consonants, the ch and the sh, because they are in a special class, they can never be hard. Now let's take a look at the vowels. Uh, in general, Russian vowels should not create any difficulty, with perhaps one or two exceptions. If you remember that they are very short in comparison with the English vowels. And by making them short, you will also avoid the off glide, this extra vowel sound, such as E and A. However, let's examine the position of uh, the articulators for the Russian U. The point of articulation will be against the soft palate. The front of the tongue will be somewhere close to the lower incisors. The lips will be advanced, and the corners of the mouth will be close together. But the lips will not be tense. Now, don't try to make this sound long. It's short. Avoid the glottal attack. Try it. Ooh. Ooh. Now, the rest of the hard vowels, or at least most of them, you can repeat after me. I'll write the first one, ooh. This is the way it's written in Russian. Ooh. ooh. The next one is oh. 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 The next one is ah. Ha. Ah. And this is the symbol for the Russian e. Eh. Make it short. E. Eh. E. Eh. Eh. All right, now before we describe the next vowel, I would like you to read this word for me in English. Able. 
All right, now I would like you to read this word in two syllables, stressing the first one. Able. All right, now I'd like you to read the same word, stressing the second syllable as much as you do the first, but drawing the corners of your mouth back and opening your jaws a little more. Able. All right, now I want you to just pronounce this word the same way, stressing just this second syllable. Able. All right, well, that's pretty close to the Russian sound U. <coughs> if you notice that the point of articulation is similar to that of U, but the tongue isn't as raised. It's sort of flat all the way across, and you must be sure to keep this front part of the tongue away from this part of the palate, otherwise you'll get this E sound. Now try it by itself, with the tongue in that position, and the corners of the mouth drawn back as far as possible. Let's try it. <coughs> All right, some of you didn't get it. Try that. All right. Now everybody. <coughs> All right. Uh, <coughs> this, this is the symbol for me. And that concludes the, or the Russian hard uh, vowels. Now let's consider the soft ones. We'll start with E. Try to say E in English. E. e. Now the Russian point of articulation will be somewhat different. The, uh, this part of the tongue will be closer to the roof. Now I'll ask you to stop vibrating the vocal cords when you say E and raise the tongue almost up to the palate and try to let the air go between this portion of the tongue and the palate. There will be considerable constriction and you will hear this hissing sound. All right, and if you voice it, you will hear ye. Yeah. 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 All right. Now this is the way this ye yeah looks in Russian, and e will be expressed this way. Now, if you put ye yeah in front of every one of these vowels, how would you pronounce it now? This will be what? You. you. All right. And this will be what? Yo. And this will be what? Yeah. yeah. And this will be what? Ye. Yeah. Now what you may not have realized is by placing ye yeah in front of every one of these hard vowels, you've advanced their point of articulation. Ye yeah is a half consonant. And if all the consonants are articulated in their proper place, the vowels will have no choice but to fall into their proper position. Now this is the way these uh, soft vowels will look in the alphabet. You will be expressed this way. Yo, this way. Ya, in this form. And ye, this way. What about e? Is it never preceded by ye? Yes. Whenever it's preceded by a consonant which can be palatalized or softened. If that preceding consonant cannot be softened, the e will be pronounced as its hard equivalent u. Now let's leave for the time being the spelling because that can be learned later and examine again the y or sh when it's part of a soft vowel or expressed separately by the so-called soft sign. Let's take a look at the dental consonants. That's right. Under the influence of the y or y, uh, the area of uh, contact extends from here to, from the teeth all the way up almost to the heart palate. And uh, the, the tongue is rather soft at this point of contact. If the consonant is voiced, its manner of articulation will resemble that of y, d will become d, and if it's unvoiced, that its manner of articulation will resemble the area of t will become ch. Now, I'd like you to repeat after me. Now, we'll shift the area up here and see what the soft looks like. The area of articulation of will be advanced from here to approximately here, 
And but the same phenomenon takes place. It's an unvoiced consonant, so the the area will resemble what? So try to make it. All right. And K will be articulated here as in English. It will become and G will become G. Now repeat after me. G. Well, what about the bilabials? The consonants are articulated with both lips or lower lip and the upper tooth, the labiodental. How are they going to be palatalized? <coughs> well, the area of articulation will not be affected. It will be exactly the same, <coughs> but the effect of palatalization will be conveyed by the peculiar shape of the tongue, which will flow, follow closely the outline of the palate as if ready to say ye or sh. Now with the tongue in that position, try to repeat after me. B, B, M, M. And for labiodentals, V, V. Now let's summarize palatalization. All the consonants articulated with the lips can be palatalized. All the consonants articulated with the lower lip and the upper teeth can be palatalized. The ones articulated with the tongue and the upper teeth can be palatalized, and all the consonants articulated in this area can be palatalized. But that leaves us this small area between the beginning of the gum ridge to the almost what? The hard palate. And it's a very peculiar area. Six consonants are articulated here, of which two are already palatalized. In other words, they can become more soft than they already are and three are so hard that they cannot become soft. So out of the six, we only have one consonant, R, which can be palatalized, and it is perhaps the most difficult one. However, before uh, seeing the outline of the tongue for the soft R, I want you to uh, notice that the characteristic effect of uh, the palatalized sound will come from the shape of the tongue. You see, the tongue will be in a position as if it were ready to say ye or sh. Now, let's see. The point of articulation for the soft R will be, in comparison with the hard one, will be more advanced, and the tip, instead of being spoon-shaped, will be somewhat of a V-shape and it's going to be somewhat lax and don't forget to have the, this part of the tongue closer to the palate and just try to say with a small tap Hiri. 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 All right, now you say it. All right, let me try it. Hiri. And everybody again. Hiri. Hiri. Now that wasn't bad, but of course you'll need additional practice. Now we'll go over this again, but before, <coughs> you must be pretty well acquainted with the different names of the articulators. So let's go over this model rather carefully. For the first two weeks, no analysis of grammar is introduced. But from the textbook, Russian words and short sentences are taken to illustrate how the sounds are used in speech. Thus, when the student starts grammar analysis, he is familiar not only with the reading and pronunciation, but also with the meaning of the words. In addition to work in class, students are required to spend at least an hour a week practicing pronunciation on tape recorders. A master tape of Russian words is played and is heard by means of earphones. This tape is timed so as to give the student a moment to repeat each word. At the same time, an individual tape recorder in each student's booth records both the sound from the master tape and the student's response. Ding. Ding. Dadja. Dadja. Nyet. Nyet. Nichivo. Nichivo. Nyuhat. Nyuhat. Ding. Поле. Поле.
the playback of the composite tape helps the student to judge his own progress. speech recordings are used frequently and short conversations are prepared for each lesson. These conversations are originals by the students. This one is from the first grammar lesson. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Я Николай. Он работает. А где Иван? Он тоже работает. Все работают. А вы? Я не люблю работать. Вы никогда не работаете? Нет, иногда я тоже работаю. Что вы делаете? Я много думаю. Ну, до свидания. До свидания. Здравствуйте, Маша. Вера, доброе утро. Как поживаете? Хорошо, спасибо. У меня друг. Где работает? Он работает в госпитале. Он доктор? Да, он доктор, он инженер, он поэт. Как фамилия? Иван Иванович, он гений. Вот новое. До свидания. Ну, до свидания. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Как поживаете? Хорошо, спасибо. А вы? Хорошо, хорошо. Как жена? Она хорошо. Она в Сибири. Несчастная. В Сибири идет снег день и ночь. Ничего, она любит снег. Любите ли вы жену? Да, я люблю мою жену в Сибири. Мне и дома хорошо, без нее. Ах, вот как. Ну, до свидания. До свидания. All right, that wasn't bad. Now, um... There will be two or three things that we'll take in the laboratory with you later. Uh, now, uh, according to our custom, we'll read the exercise together. Um, After two weeks, the students will have learned the alphabet and will have acquired the new speech habits which are necessary for the correct pronunciation of the Russian language. On Americanets. On Americanets. A ja. A ja. Ruski. Ruski. Он хорошо. Он хорошо. Понимает. Понимает. 